Media manipulation is a real problem plaguing the world. Long decades before U.S. President Donald Trump declared every outlet to be fake news, it was rampant. Riddled throughout history, we've seen several examples of media manipulation to try to achieve goals, usually involving war. Today, we'll look at several examples of media manipulation, discuss its implications it has on us all. Let's get it. Welcome to BitBoy Crypto. If you would like daily crypto videos, make sure to hit that subscribe button. If you want to learn more about crypto or trading, then please make sure to join one or both of my Telegram chats, the BitSquad or BitSquad Traders. All right, guys, today we're going to be taking a look at how the media constantly twists storylines in order to fit its narratives. And this is something we've seen the media run rampant with in crypto. You guys know the storylines. Bitcoin's a scam. Bitcoin's only for criminals, yada, yada, yada. So we're going to take a look at media manipulation in general. Media manipulation is the act of tricking the public for a goal, which is previously stated, seems to always be a conflict, and in the case of Bitcoin, a financial one. How this is done is a number of ways, including psychological warfare, known as psyops, and neurolinguistic programming. So what is NLP? An example of NLP would be repeating phrases and drilling those words and emotions that come from them into the public's head. For example, international whistleblowing organization WikiLeaks tweeted the following in regards to politicians' use of NLP, posting a video of the UK Parliament repeating the phrase, strong and stable, over and over again. WikiLeaks also tweeted the following in discussion about media manipulation in China. Western media produce endless fake news stories about China by exploiting ignorance about the nature of its tabloids, with a link to foreignpolicy.com that states Global Times doesn't speak for China. When you hear the words media manipulation, Potentially, the first thing that comes to mind would be Operation Mockingbird, if you know any of the history. It was a CIA program where the agency infiltrated media organizations and academics with a goal of spreading disinformation. The Church Committee in 1975, a congressional panel, found the CIA had paid journalists to produce fake stories during the Cold War era, 1950s through the 70s. They also funded student and cultural organizations and magazines as front operations. The CIA operation became known as Operation Mockingbird and was mentioned in the infamous CIA Family Jewels collection. However, that's not the only time throughout history where media manipulation has taken place. In fact, President George W. Bush himself exposed what are known as government press packages in the early 2000s, when Ken Harmon of Cox News Service questioned him on the use of government-produced pieces aired on television stations across the U.S. and journalists being paid to show them. As Harmon pointed out, there's no disclaimer that these stories sent to air on television stations around the U.S. are provided by the government, raising several ethical questions. Essentially, these are pieces of propaganda, something the American public was supposed to be protected from under the smith mundet Act of 1945, which barred the federal government from producing sensationalized content manipulating the public. smith mundet was a result of the Church Committee's findings and later repealed under NDAA, signed by Obama in 2012. As murder journalist Michael Hastings said, smith mundet has been passed to protect U.S. audiences from our own government's misinformation campaigns. The UK equivalent to Operation Mockingbird was known as Operation Mass Appeal. It was allegedly ran by MI6 between 1997 and 98, and then exaggerated Iraq's weapons of mass destruction according to former UN Chief Weapons Inspector Scott Ritter. That claim was further exaggerated years later in 2003 when the UK government on Downing Street produced a fake Iraq war memo that was exposed as being based off academic papers a claim that would have never seen the light of day if it wasn't for a doctor named David Kelly, one of the lead scientists who called the Iraq dossier sham. Kelly was later found in the woods, and his death remains a mystery to this day. We learned recently that Bush and Tony Blair planned the Iraq invasion one year prior in a blood pact thanks to Democrat candidate Hillary Clinton's emails that were leaked. Clear as day, it seems that both world leaders manipulated the public's mind with propaganda to go to war, constantly repeating the trigger words, weapons of mass destruction in the public's ear at every given moment to sell the Iraq war, NLP. Next, we have Afghanistan and its propaganda operations, which murdered journalist Michael Hastings exposed, entitled The Afghanistan Report the Pentagon Doesn't Want You to Read. The article was surrounding a leaked, unclassified Pentagon report. The report took the shroud off of the U.S. Military PsyOps Operation Command mentioned earlier in this article by MISOC. 
revealing several techniques the group uses in psychological warfare to manipulate the public, including but not limited to fake intelligence information, lack of information, and social media manipulation, according to Lieutenant Colonel Daniel Davis. Hastings also accused MISOC of deploying a psychological operation on U.S. senators in another report and on video with Democracy Now! The U.S. military's social media program was further revealed in 2011 by The Guardian, who reported that the military had sock puppet software that creates fake online identities to spread pro-American propaganda, the same thing we see with Russian trolls. Now, that's two countries that were invaded involving psychological warfare operations. Then there's the Gulf of Tonkin incident that started the invasion of Vietnam. It was based on the false pretense of when the government at the time lied and said a second Gulf of Tonkin attack had happened, and they also finally admitted the bombing of the Lusitania, which started World War I. And while we're talking about false flags to start wars, let's add in the proposed false flag that JFK stopped Operation Northwoods. There's also the infamous tale of Naira. For those not old enough to remember, Naira was a 15-year-old girl who falsely testified in Congress in October of 1990. Naira claimed to be a refugee and a hospital missionary of the maternity ward of al Adan Hospital in Kuwait City, stating she had witnessed Iraqi soldiers steal incubators and leave 312 inmates to die. Shortly after the launch of Operation Desert Storm by then-President George Herbert Walker Bush, Naira lied about her identity. She was actually the daughter of the Kuwait ambassador to the United States at the time and a member of the Kuwait royal family. Naira had no connection to the hospital at all. In fact, she was instructed on how to give her testimony by a U.S. public relations firm, Hill and Knowlton. In a more modern day example, over the past decade, we've even had further media manipulation attempts like the fake Kony 2012 movement to invade Uganda, which was exposed as a farce, and more recently, a fake actress lobbyist, Saghar Erika Kazare, who previously used to lobby for a Libyan militia preaching for the US to invade Iran, aka the 21st century Naira. BuzzFeed News reported that Kazare previously worked for Linden Government Solutions, a Texas-based lobbying firm hired to represent the Libyan National Army, a militia in the North African country led by Field Marshal Khalifa Haltar, a former officer in Qaddafi's government, who spent much of the last two decades living in Virginia, of all places, during which time he worked with the CIA. The news outlet found public documents that were filed through the Foreign Agent Registration Act which showed she worked as a part-time lobbyist just last year. And yet another example is how the media as a whole portrayed a video that was claimed to be from Syria that was known as the Syrian Boy Hero. It was real, but was later revealed by Norwegian filmmakers to have been faked. As a result, the media had to backpedal their story, issuing retractions. Nowadays, the internet can be utilized in a number of ways for even more media manipulation. From suppressing search results, to shape a narrative, to deep fake videos, and fake cries for help like Kazare. On the topic of deep fake videos, with such technology as face-to-face, -face, can we even trust what we see being live? Like Benjamin Franklin said, believe none of what you hear and only half of what you see. Heck, you shouldn't even believe this is a quote from him. But whoever said it is definitely right from the technology perspective. And if it's all combined, no one will be able to tell the difference between what's real and what's fake in the future. A German team wrote that the face-to-face -face program in the wrong hands would allow anyone to change the mouth and words of a person speaking in a video, even if it's live. In their clip, Face to Face, it says real-time face capture and reenactment of RGB videos demonstrate how this technology works on video recordings of world leaders Bush, Obama, and Putin. Oh, and when it comes to social media, take CBS News' advice. Social media is a tool of the CIA. Seriously. As far as mainstream media manipulation goes, as a fun fact, the CFR owns the media. As former Army Major Todd Pierce described, the CFR acts as primary provocateurs using psychological suggestiveness to create a false narrative of danger from some foreign entity, with the objective being to create paranoia within the U.S. population that it is under imminent threat of attack or takeover. That's how people stay in control. This sentiment was echoed by in-prison journalist Julian Assange before he was arrested in 2019, who tweeted out, CFR owns all major media. Assange tweeted the following in January of 2018. I hope this information has helped you realize numerous ways that we're all being tricked by media manipulation and the techniques that are being used to deceive us. Questioning is healthy, and as writer Naomi Wolf expressed, you should think before it's illegal to do so. It's no longer crazy to assess news events to see if they're real or not real. She stated in a video below, as history has shown through declassified documents like the overthrow of Mossadegh, 
leaked diplomatic cables by WikiLeaks, and reporting by murder journalist Michael Hastings, who exposed propaganda used against the Senate and Congress. All over the world, it's well established. The State Department intelligence agencies engage in theater, and it's what they do. It's spycraft to create spectacles and events that people may not realize are spectacles and events. That was Naomi Wolf. The truth is, you cannot believe the news. The good thing, though, is video platforms like YouTube and decentralized video platforms like Library allow people to get their information from various streams instead of the primetime evening news. This allows different perspectives and much more critical sources. I would ask that the next time you watch CNN, MSNBC, or Fox News, strictly watch it to decipher the angle they are trying to push. And then ask yourself, who is asking them to push it? But now is your turn. What do you believe about media manipulation? Do you think this is real or is it just all made up? Do you think everything is given at face value? Drop your comments down below. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to smash the like button and hit subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Have a blessed day. Good boy out.